There he is. They. Looky here, folks. I found me another area right here. I'm always searching for different places. I move around with these fish, and I like to have bunches of areas where I can I can find them. That now that crappie right there is just barely, barely hooked. Barely hooked. Let's see what we can do with him. Golly, y'all see what he hit? It's been that way. Let's let him go. Well, good morning, folks. Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. Now, that was a black crappie that we just had uh, let go. He was about 12 inches long, and he was up in around 8 feet of water, uh, probably about 6 feet deep. And I caught him on an orange-headed underspin right there. Now, that's a uh, finesse underspin with a crappie magnet on there, a natural color. It's almost clear. It's got red, orange, green fleck in it. I don't know what you call, it, what color you call it. That's one thing about crappie magnet. They make all kinds of different colors. But what I'm using is a six foot ten light action sow belly rod. Um, long, I can get long cast, and with it I have eight pound test braid with a 2000 size Johnny Morris spinning reel, which is nothing more but just a die with reel. We, we know for a fact on this channel that crappie's not line shy. Now this is eight pound test braid. It's too small in diameter for me to tie this underspin directly to. What happens is, uh, normally when I'm fishing an underspin on these flats, I'm throwing into the wind. And what happens, that blade causes that underspin to twist and uh, that little braid will get caught up under your components right there where they hook onto resulting in well you got to cut it off and retie it again so I'm getting to where I'm using a minimum of a two foot leader sometimes four foot leader and that's it and the only reason why I'm using it is because it's bigger in diameter and that's eight pound test test floor carbon it's big enough in diameter to keep that problem from happening now if it wasn't for that I'd just go ahead and tie it to the braid but I want that light eight pound braid so I can get those long casts oftentimes you need long casts uh, crappie are pretty spooky up in the shallow water a lot of times I find them in three and four feet of water this time of year and uh, that's just the fact. All right, that's a double uni knot for the connection, my favorite, favorite knot. And I have a Palomar knot right here tied to the bait. Let's get back in here and see if we can find some more crappie. Now, this is a different place. Uh, first crappie. Are there any more out here? Well, they should be. Normally, where there's one, there's more. Let's get back up here and see. The wind has changed directions. I'm going to face into the wind normally all the time, folks. I, your boat positioning, you, your, the control of your boat is much better. If you'll face the wind, you can fish slow, you know, crappie. I've stressed this a lot of times. Crappie is the type of fish that in my opinion, you're better off just to fish slow for them because they're not going to do a 100-yard dash oftentimes um, when it comes to fishing these artificials like this, whether it be a jig or an underspin or a small crankbait or, you know, there's a lot of different baits I like to use. Y'all can see that there's a slight bow because the wind is blowing that way. What I do is I watch that bow. I watch for that thump. I love to see that and feel it. Of course, braid is super sensitive, but I love to see that line go. 
Now this underspin fishing is probably one of the easiest things you can do. It's a lot easier than fishing with just a, a jig. Uh, like I've mentioned before, as when you find their depth, all you have to do is repeat that over and over again. And as long as you're catching those fish at that depth, well, you're doing good. You're doing the right thing. But just a steady wind is all you need. Let's look at this bait in the water. Y'all see that? That's all you need right there. That's it. That blade does the work. You don't need no fancy movements of your rod tip and all that kind of stuff. Not unless you want to look big. If there's a lot of people around, you know, you might want to do that to look big. Me, I don't. I don't care about that kind of stuff. I just want to catch them. But I have learned... And this is my opinion, just a steady wind. I mean, the, uh, sometimes you might want to let it drop like that. And then reel it 10 or 12 feet and do it again if you want to keep it interesting. A lot of times that's what it takes, to be honest with y'all, to get the strike. But normally, no, just a steady retrieve to get the job done. And slow as you possibly can reel it and still keep it at that depth. So what I mean is if I'm fishing in oh, real shallow water, I want the lightest underspin that I can, I can get. And sometimes I'll cut the lead off of them to make them lighter so I can reel them slower. That way you can keep that bait in the strike zone for a much longer period of time. There he is. There's another crappie. That was a thump, no doubt about it. Golly, that fish is fighting. I know a crappie bite. That fish is giving me a lot of trouble right here. That's why it's a giant crappie. Big old crappie. I mean, this is a mule, folks. Golly, let's net that fish. Let's net him before he gets off. There he is. Oh my goodness, that fish right there is over, way over two pounds. That's the kind of fish I've been fishing. I've been fit. what I say? That's the kind of fish I've been catching on this pattern right here. Big old crappie. Whew. Boy, 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 folks. I want y'all to look right here. Whew. There's something about that orange. I've been catching a lot of big fish on here lately, but that fish is way above, way over two pounds. I'm a little bit excited because there's a boat right in behind me. I found this crappie, and there's a pontoon boat behind me, and it's not that I want to be stingy or anything. I just want, that's too good crappie. This is an excellent fish right here. I mean, that fish right there is probably close to 15 inches, 15 inches long. But what I'm wanting to do is, is see if there's some more there. All right, folks. He ain't been out of the water long, or she. Golly, let's let her go. There she goes. I don't know if you, can y'all see that pontoon boat? There, it's way back there, but still. You know, I'm gonna. You know, that's the point right there that I'm catching them from, off of. What I'm gonna do is fish this point and the next one right there to see if the pattern's gonna hold up. Let's do that for a while. Woo! 
I'm keeping that bait right now, folks. I'm keeping that bait anywhere between five and six feet deep. And what I'm doing, I'm going to show you how I do that with an underspin. It's basically the same way that, that you would go about it with a jig. But, okay, boom. One, two, three, four, and five. Pick that rod tip up. And bring it back at a constant speed just like that and as it gets closer to the boat I tend to point my rod towards the bait like that y'all excuse me I didn't like my boat control there so it messed me up but y'all get the gist of it what I'm doing right here just a steady steady wind once you read reach that depth and slow and you can maintain that depth because that's where they're at right now I, I caught two and that's where both of them were let me put it that way an underspin is a great great bait to search for fish and, and it's really <clears throat> that was a bluegill you can cover a lot of water I mentioned that a lot of times with this bait and in an underspin, don't always catch them every time. You can forget that. Sometimes it's too aggressive for a crappie. Um, some days when they're really... There's a fish right there. That's a good one. Right there at the boat, folks. Right at the boat. I'm talking about... These fish are just milling around. They're just moving around. That's just all they are to it. They're not trying to be stay put on a certain piece of cover or anything like that. I love it when they do this. And this is my number one bait when they are doing this to catch them on. Something I make a lot of casts with and, and keep on the fish. You know, that's the deal with fishing is to keep on top of the fish. Whew. There we go. Nice fish. Nothing wrong with that. Let's let him go right here. Okay, let's lay this one down for a second. It's getting more and more overcast. A little more, a little more. Let's grab this one right here. Now this is a sow belly rod too. It's just a little bit shorter. It's a six and a half foot sow belly. Um, light power, six foot six, light power. But I'm using a totally different color. This is a, a crappie magnet that's got a light lime color. That's not really, I guess I see you could consider that lime or, or light light chartreuse um, I would say lime in just a, almost a clear color right here pearl for the other half but it's got a gold blade we're going to try that and I'm throwing the same thing 8 pound braid in a short leader this leader is about 3 feet double uni knot palomar knot right here my favorite but let's see if they'll, these fish will react to this gaudy color. Now, there's no shad in here that looks like that. They, these shad are white and silver. But it's getting pretty overcast. And I've found through the years that the gaudy colors, um, even in clear water like we're fishing right now, uh, that with a gold blade... That combination right there, a lot of times, will kill crappie. They'll absolutely eat it up because they can see it better. And as y'all know, you know, yellow and sharp truce uh, has always been the most visible color to any fish, including bass. They see that color above any other color. There he is. Yeah, 
he hit that gold blade. Got a little bit darker and I swapped. I made a lot, several casts with that orange head silver blade and didn't get bit. And I messed around here and got goldy out here. Sometimes you got to change. Change with the weather conditions. That's some, well, that's something I have to do all the time. Let's net this one. That's a good fish right there. I mean, a dandy. Jim dandy. Look at him wrapped up in there. Big old broad crappie. <laughs> he hit Goldie. Golly, what a fish, folks. See what I'm talking about? How thick. Now look at that. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Let's let him go. Golly. Get on back in there, boy. Those fish are surprisingly shallow. And they'll do this every time. I, I catch on to that pretty quick because any time a front's coming, they'll jump, they'll come up to the to the surface almost within two or three feet from the surface and suspend over deep water, crappie will. Um, and the reason they're doing that is because the minners are. Minners meaning the shad they're feeding on. It just works hand in hand, folks. These fish has been feeding real heavy. If you notice, their stomachs are real fat. They're kind of like me. They're getting fat. There he is. I hope that one stays on. He bit funny, folks. Big crappie, too. Look here. He bit real funny. He nipped at it twice, and then he obligated. You can feel that with that braid. That's why I love the fish with braid. Now, with mono, I don't believe I could have felt that. But with a braid, I've noticed that through the years, how they do. That's a good fish. That's netty. That's a good one. Oh, he jumped in it. Quit. That ain't good. Get on in here. Well, it don't matter. We're not going to eat them anyway. There ain't no need to threatening that's another good fish i tell you what it's <laughs> it's been a phenomenal few hours out here it has it's been something else quit quit look at there another big giant big giant and i love to hook them like that right there y'all see that right in the top of the mouth you don't never lose them that way quit beautiful beautiful fish right there let's let him go going back boy god y'all see that he was ready to boogie out it's very very important to change angles when you're talking about crappie fishing folks and I've stressed that a lot not just skipping docks. You know, I do that a whole lot, skipping docks, so I can continue catching fish. But not just that. Out here in open water, too. Change those angles. That presentation, you need to bring it from all kinds of different directions. When the fish slow up about their biting, just change your angle. And oftentimes, it'll trigger a few more bites. See, like that one. That's a crappie. I wouldn't get any bites throwing straight in. So I changed angles and voila. That works. If it didn't, I wouldn't tell y'all that it did. 
Come on in here, boy. Good, good crappie. Yep. And take your time with your fish. Have fun. I'll see them old boys uh, use them old long rods. And they'll they'll get a bite and boy they'll jerk that fish in there. Well that fish don't don't know what's going on. He's still green as he can be when he's in the boat. And then in the bucket he'll go. It's just bloom bloom and then they'll take him up and bloom right in the bucket. That that's just not that's not sporty to me folks. Let's let him go right here. Big old thing. Uh oh, the sun come out. Weather is constantly changing. Ooh, look at them old dark clouds back yonder, folks. I tell y'all what, folks, this is one heck of a front right here. The wind got so rough it actually <laughs> run me off of three spots, three different spots three different areas and they was all holding good fish but you know what that's the sport of fishing woo hey man woo okay underspans I'll uh rig three or four rods up with different colors okay different color of heads and different colors of blades and I'll throw them a little bit each of them a little bit till I figure out which ones or one the crop you're really keying in on now when you do that you'll find out that colors do make a difference uh, blade styles makes a difference. Sometimes willow leaf blades are your best bet. Sometimes little Indiana blades like that's on Roadrunners are the best. So all these understands come into play. And if you've never fished with them, hey man, give it give it a chance. Get all colors. I mean make you a tackle box especially for underspins and get all styles shapes colors weights um, and you'll find out it's a very productive bait at times there's a tiny place for all sometimes it's not worth anything sometimes it's the only thing that fish wants to really eat especially crappie appreciate each and every one of y'all hey woo. Hey, woo, doggone it. Hey, man, woo! And you remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good.